Good morning. This is Mike with Trek with Mike, Texas. I'm a veteran of the United States Navy. I was on a submarine during the Cold War. From time to time, I'm going to tell you a sea story. Today's topic, rack time. Rack. You called rack basic sleep. You went to your rack and that's where you slept. So on a submarine, at least during the Cold War, I think they've changed it, but during the Cold War, your days were 18 hours. In other words, you had watch for six hours, okay? And it always coincided with food. So your, your meals were 6 a.m., actually 5.30 to 6.30, 11.30 to 12.30, and then 5.30 p.m. to 6.30 p.m. And then they had what they call mid-rats, and that was 11.30 p.m. to 12.30 a.m. So every six hours. So if you're, if you're going on watch, you're first in line, you eat with the 5.30 bunch, okay? That way, you got 15 or 20 minutes to get, you get finished eating, to go down and relieve the watch by six o'clock. If you're not on watch, and you're not on watch, and you're, if you're not on watch or going on watch, then you don't eat until 5.20 for breakfast, okay? You eat in the middle. And the people coming off a of watch, you know, I go relieve you at six, you do your little clean up, and then you go the last 20 minutes of the hour, and you eat, 10 after. And then so you're, you would have three, three sections, three watch sections. So you would, let's say you were on six to, six to noon, okay? Then you would have 12 hours off, all right? And then after that, you went back on watch. So you did whatever you had to do in those 12 hours. And this is out at sea, by the way. So, you always have some divisional work to do. Maintenance, records. There's always something you could do. Um, so you have to get that normal stuff done. And then, uh, the next thing is, is you've got to uh, do qualifications. And qualifications take up so much time. Just so much time. Uh, takes about a year to qualify the ship. But with that, you have other watch stations to qualify at the same time. morning so you had other watch stations to qualify at the same time and then once you qualify those you might stand those watches instead of the one you're on but you're always trying to qualify the next one because uh, usually the higher watch stations are the better watch stations and so it's you know, you just want to qualify them. And then they want you to qualify them. But then there's things like, for me, I was an E5. And I think they thought some of us had too much time on our hands because we were done with all of our qualifications. They asked us to... Forced us to. 
uh, qualified chief of the watch which is an E7 position which you know you could get qualified but they're never going to assign you that as a watch station until you're you know a chief or almost a chief you know some first classes held the position but they were you know taking the chief's test and all this other stuff so a little crazy I guess they didn't want people to have too good a time and I like chief of the watch anyway the this watch station but it's just not you know what I was needing to to do or wanting to do and you know I'd never get to stand the watch and you know it, it didn't really matter but so you got this time to do what you want and then so your rack time becomes very important and a lot of times when you're new on the boat you're getting three or four hours maybe sleep in between doing all your qualifications and stuff and and then doing the next thing which is the uh, your next watch and so these guys are walking around always just like zombies because they're just sleep deprived and uh, <clears throat> but you know when you get them all done then then there's a different problem you got too much time maybe the movie's not good at midnight or maybe it's not midnight and you got too much time on your hands and so you get off watch you go eat you hit the rack you put a wake-up call in for 30 minutes before your next watch so you can get a quick shower before you go eat and then go and watch then you get off watch in six hours clean up eat real quick hit the rack so you're hitting the rack for 10 hours straight and again this only happens when you're on station in places where the boat's not going to do drills all day and day which is what happens otherwise the boat just drills all day long and you don't get sleep anyway but those times when everybody has to be quiet are the good times so I did this I did this for oh four or five maybe days we're talking compressed days you know 18 hour days so I'd be up for maybe seven and a half or eight and then down for ten and and up for seven and a half and down for ten up for seven and a half down for ten and then I the thing is I got tireder and tireder so it was hard to make it through the watch and go those seven and a half hours before I just uh, you know was so tired I want to crawl back in the rack and then and then at a period of time I don't remember how long it was your eyes fail open and you can't sleep at all and so you're you're wandering the boat like a zombie I mean not you know just you're wide awake But you got nothing to do. Got nothing to do. You're just bored. Uh, it was one of those times where I was in a previous sea story about cake. I think my first sea story. Um, I was hanging out in the in the. Uh, control room in the middle of the night because you know I couldn't sleep at all and uh, you know you just it, it's agonizing you're up to three or four days total again compressed days without sleeping and you can't sleep you try to sleep and so you got 10 hours to kill you've done all your maintenance you've done you know of course you're not qualifying anything you're done you got nothing to do 
And so you start, you know, doing weird stuff like hanging out in the fan room, which we've discussed. Hanging out in control. You know, just hanging out in places where a torpedo man never really hangs out. So, rack time. That's, that's some good time. Uh, if you can get it, it's, uh, it's rare, but then if you get it, don't get too much, because then uh, that's a problem, too. Thanks for watching.